Hello and welcome to another update of the uh, on the Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 series. And we've had a big update today. We've taken a, a big step forward in the last stream and started shipping the beryllium out by by um well by a more advanced uh, system. So over here, I've added in. Um, on the end, on the end of the system that's producing the beryllium that you've you've all seen before, I've got a nice trick, a trickle of it flowing down here because there are some some, some issues with the supply at the moment. But we'll ignore, gloss over that for a moment. Uh, that's all flowing down here and going into this warehouse here, along with, as you can see here, all of the junk that's being produced by the core processing. So we've decided the best way to deal with all the core chunks is to process them anyway and then get out the bits and pieces that we. Act, that we sort of need and allow us to and allow us to carry on making delivery cannon capsules at least as much as we need them but then all of the ores that come out of that are then passed down here and, and the overflow comes down this belt and is then fed into this warehouse as well and this allows us to we reckon will allow us to sort of condense everything down a bit because if we look at the recipe for this we can see that over here you take in 20 core fragments which is i believe a stack of core fragments they don't stack very high and that produces about 30 or 40 so or so of the uh, of the various different solids and those can then be uh, and those all stack up to 50 so you get quite a lot more in a stack of ore than you do in a stack of cores and that means we can fit more into our spaceship so it's a slightly more efficient way of transporting the stuff around and it means we get to keep the pyroflux on this planet which means we can then use it in the in the processing over there and it means we can keep the oil and turn it into plastic which means we can carry on making the filters which is less use less necessary but it does mean we've got all of those all the, all that stuff around here for whatever we need it for so for example i've been able to tap off the iron supply over here in order to make extra red belts because i kept running out of them and so that's all fed into the into the warehouse here and then out into this train and the train is doing our standard sushi system where the uh, the train gradually fills up with a, with a mixture of stuff as you can as you can see and when it's when it gets to the point where all of, where it's completely where it's as full as it's going to get then you start to get all the resources backing up along the belt along here it'll eventually back up all the way back to the uh, warehouse we'll fill up the whole thing and then when all the resources back up to these areas here where we're reading the con contents of the belt we're passing that over to this uh, combinator which is looking to see when anything is uh, when anything is greater than zero turning it into s's and then the train can be set to depart when s equals 32 um, and and in inactivity and so an s equals 32 means all of these belts are full and therefore the train is ready to and, and therefore the train is as, is as full as it's going to get and is, is therefore ready to go. In the interests of the of a demonstration, I shall hop on board the train and uh, dispatch it manually because, well, it, it, it's going to take a while to fill up because, as I said, we're having some issues with supply at the moment. Um, I do, go, do get hurt a little bit by the uranium over here, but never mind, my shields can take that. The train then arrives up here in Talos orbit where we have an, a, a nice little station here for unloading. So as you can see here, we're now dumping all of the uh, all those ores and the beryllium that was on the train. This is this can all be dumped straight out for, out from here using these loaders onto these belts. That then flows all the way around here, goes into some more warehouses, and then these warehouses are set up to load onto this this spaceship. And this spaceship flies off to Norbit. There's a few other notes that think things up here to note as well. Like for example, we've got a system here that will recycle all the batteries from the train. So the um, the flat batteries will be taken out, passed around here, and um, and be recharged by by these chargers, uh, and then put back into into the chest over here. And then any of the broken ones will then be passed around here, and will go into the in, in, into the disposal system up here, where they can be sent back over to Norvis as well. Once this ship finally fills up, and yes, I am aware of the elephant in the room here with the Vulcanite and Cryonite. We're going to come back to that. Don't worry. Once this spaceship finally fills up, it will then fly off to Norvis orbit where it will dock here, where at this point it is then unable, it is then able to unload all of that, all those resources, whether it's the, the beryllium and all of the ores, they get dropped out into these into these warehouses over here. And at the top we've got uh, some systems here to take out the, uh, the the broken battery packs will be taken up here and dumped onto the onto the scrap belt to be recycled up here. The beryllium is gets put into this this warehouse and then into this train so it can be taken away and we'll eventually have a nice a nice healthy supply of beryllium available for this train. And then all of the all of the junk then gets passed along these belts. As you can see, we've got the fil filters on the on the um, on the loaders, and that is just about that is just everything that, we, that needs to come through here, except core fragments which may or may not end up on the system. We don't expect to have any through, but it is it is in it there as an emergency overflow. This all then flows up up to here and will be loaded into this train. Then up here, we're using a slightly different system to tell the train when to depart. So if it's having activity and there is and there is stuff in the warehouse then the train will depart. So we need to be a little bit careful with this, but as soon as anything arrives in the warehouse, it should then get put into the train. So we'll see some activity and then and then the train will depart once the uh, once it once there is stuff in the warehouse but also in inactiv activity, which means that therefore the train or at least the bottom wagon of the train must be full and the top one should fill up at about the same rate anyway. And the inactivity will keep it there. Now there is a slight problem here. 
and that is that the train is watching for greater than zero. So there is going to be a very short period of time when stuff will arrive up the belts here, go into the warehouse, and then the train will be here waiting in its current state where it's not quite full, but it's been inactive for five seconds, so it will depart. So we're going to need to change that. If we change this to a circuit, a circuit if, if, there's, if there's more than 100 of anything, then that'll mean because anything that arrives in here, there's, there's four belts feeding in and 12 belts feeding out, it means that we won't get above 100 items in here until the train is actually full and stuff is starting to back up. So with that little tweak, then the train should work nicely. This train then goes from here, much as you'd expect. It then travels all the way up the spine of the space station and goes down in the down the elevator here to Norvis, down the elevator here, drops in over here, will unload, as you've seen before with all of the other trains that are doing this, and all that, all that scrap, all, all the ores and things will be dumped down here and will go into these trains to be taken off to be recycled. So this is all working in much the same way as the, uh, as the junk that was coming from Norbit. It's just being brought all the way from Talos. On the other side of this, we're loading in the things that are needed out on Talos. So in this case, it's Vulcanite and Cryonite. So they're being loaded into the spaceship um, to be, bring over to Talos or Orbit in order to be taken down. So the spaceship, when it flies one way, it'll take the resources that are needed by Talos and then when it flies the other way it'll take the resources that are provided by Talos and this means we don't need to have multiple ships flying backwards and forwards for all these various things but it does mean we need to bring the Vulcanite and Cryonite to Norvis orbit first. Now this is at the moment we're bringing it in by delivery cannon but ignore that because that's not going to be the case for very long. We're going to get rid of that as soon as possible because that is a ridiculous way of bringing it in. We're also going to start, at the moment we're feeding in the battery packs, the cable and the filters into an extra green chest that's going to be tucked in away, tucked in on the ship here. But I think we're going to switch that to be brought in, in with this system as well. And as you can see, we're currently using at least a bit of cryonite, so we're feeding that through. Because we're using the same sort of system we use everywhere, where we tell the system to monitor how much cryonite, or how much vulcanite in this case, there is on the other planet. And send that out, send over its request as a negative number. So over here, you can see that we're asking at the moment for about 600 cryonite. So we've got that being poured in here, being put into the warehouse, and then when the ship comes over again, it'll pick that up. At the other end in Talos orbit, it all gets unloaded into these warehouses, as you can see by these belts here. And it's then fed down, 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 down here, and it's sorted here into a stream of vulcanite and a stream of cryonite that can be passed into the train. So these are now filling up with, filling up with those two. These stack much, much higher because, well, they're, uh, they're a, a much more processed uh, resource. So we can, we can pump a lot more of this through into the train and eventually it'll fill up. I'm going to again skip this for the, sake of the, um, for the sake of the video. Eventually the train will fill up and it can then come back, back round and head down, head back down the elevator, back down to, um, back down to Talos. At which point it comes around here and it will start to unload and because there's not too many different things being dealt with here we can unload, we can just use these filter loaders to unload, it's really really straightforward we can pour all of that out, in the meantime we're, we're loading up with all of these resources now I do hope, oh yeah I was going to say I hope that this uh, loads up with the other, th the, gets rid of the cryonite fast enough that this doesn't fill it up but that doesn't matter because we've got the inactivity on the train's itinerary as well and that means we're going to then be able to pump all of the um, all the cryonite and vulcanite out back in, into these warehouses here and from there I've now put in some a new belt system or at least turned round most of the belts so instead of having all of these resources come from the delivery cannon chest up here which was providing them before so we had the cryonite coming out we had the, the vulcanite coming out now we've got them all being brought up from down here. So the cryonite goes into the uh, into the whatever whatever stage. This is beryllium sulfide, I think. Whatever this stage is called, and the vulcanite can be brought up to go into here to be turned into pyroflux for the uh, for the smelting stage. So this is now at least as long as we you, you'll notice it stopped at the moment because we did, we had a shortage of vulcanite. Once that comes up here, that'll all start working, and the whole system should just tick over quite nicely and keep all of the and keep everything flowing. To give credit where it's due, basically everything that involved the train was my construction, and everything that involved the spaceship was Mark's. So he's done. He's put in a lot more of the effort to this. I've, 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 my, my part on this has been relatively simple. Um, I've got in. I've got in a relatively straightforward station down here that loads and unloads, as you can see. And then up in Talos orbit, I've got a very simple station that unloads everything and loads in cryonite and vulcanite. Now, it, the, we, we had some ideas about just doing this in one station, just for the sort of just because it seems neat and nice and fancy. And the reason I've done all of this with one train instead of the sort of four trains I was planning to use before is basically because Tristan challenged me to. So um, he, he suggested, now, yeah, that does sound like a nice way to make the system a bit overcomplicated. Let's do that. So, so yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> it's probably silly, but never mind. It it, make, it makes the system a little bit more interesting. Now it does occur to me that there's there's only there's a relatively small number of things being brought up here, um, but the problem is there's slightly more things being brought up or potentially being brought up than there are, than there is room on a, on a filter in order to unload it. So you can see here I've got I've got five spaces on my on, on my filter for the uh, space loaders. 
And over here we are bringing up, well we're definitely bringing up stone, copper, rare, raw rare metals, uranium ore and beryllium. We might also bring up potentially coal, probably iron ore and there's a non-zero chance of bringing up core fragments as well. So we would have to make the system deal with all of those. Now it does occur to me that because there's one, two, three, four things that are coming up on mass, and then some other things that might be coming up in small dribbles. And there's several, and I could have several unloaders here. What I could do is have each of these unload the four main things, and then one additional thing. So this one would be uh, the, the four main things: the, the stone, the copper, the rare metals, and the beryllium. And and then additionally uranium, and this one would be the four main ones, and additionally iron, and so on. We can ha and then we could have quite a lot of unloaders along here. Put in some put splitters to join it all up, and then we'd be able to get all of that stuff out in um, out on uh, from one station, and still have still then potentially be able to load these things in as well from over here. I might do that just because there's something a bit more elegant about doing everything in a single station. It'd be slightly quicker. We don't care about the speed. The, the speed is absolutely it do doesn't matter at all because we've got plenty of time on this system. The limiting factor is how fast we can produce beryllium and all of the other stuff that's generated. But making your stations run slightly faster and slightly more efficiently is always a fun challenge. So I think I might do that next time. I might I'll bring these bring these belts around here, load them in from the other side, and then put in some more unloaders and have any novel extra things only being brought out by a single uh, by a single loader and uh, yeah I think I think it's, it's not worth doing but I think it'll be interesting to do that and and and, and slightly neater and, and it's just it's just fun to overcomplicate these things a little bit I think the other very notable thing about uh, what Mark's done is the way the spaceships are loaded and unloaded. So if we have a look over here, you can see that we've got all of the resources pouring in on one side of the system and everything and, pour, and to load up the ship and pouring out the other side to unload it. And if the ship was only carrying stuff when it went in one direction, this would be absolutely fine. You pour in the beryllium and the miscellaneous junk on this side and you wouldn't have these unloaders here. And then when it gets to Norbit, you'd have the unloaders on this side and it would all pour out the other side. The problem and the thing that makes this a little bit tricky is that this spaceship isn't just carrying stuff in one direction we want it to be able to carry in both directions and so we've got these things these controls on these belts outside the spaceship on both sides and this makes things a little bit more complicated but also a bit more powerful and flexible so in a nutshell what happens is the spaceship lands here and then we flow out on this side using using these belts until we've got rid of all of the vulcanite and cryonite um, and so these belts don't these belts are all stopped during that time once that's all been unloaded it then switches over. These belts are stopped, and then these belts start to run, and they unload, and they, and they load the ship back up again with the beryllium, the stone, all, and all the, all the junk that's going in here. And while these belts are stopped, and so that stops all of the resources just flowing straight through and coming back onto this side, and then getting clog clogging up the system, which is all very well and good. But there are a couple of problems with it. One is that, as you can see down here, um, there is a little bit of beryllium and copper and so on on this side. And so we've got these these fill, these inserters over here that are blacklisting. And so these ones will dump out anything that comes through here that isn't vulcanite or cryonite back onto this belt to flow back around and go back into the system. So each time the system, each time the, the ship arrives, there's going to be a little bit of junk in the in in the belt in, in the underground belts here that'll get passed through in, in into the system and then and then pass through, passed out again. It's not too much because I think when the ship departs, anything that's actually underground in these belts gets destroyed. So it's only the very small amount that's in these belts across here that will get passed through. And then when the ship arrives again, everything that's in in, in, in the in, in the flow will be will be uh, vulcanite or cryonite. You do lose the, what what is in the um, in the belt in the underground belts at the time of departure, but it's not a huge amount of resource. We're not that stint, that we're not that short of stuff, so we're not too worried about that. If we were, we could make these belts just go under underground for as short a distance as possible, but then we would lose these solar panels, and losing solar panels means you lose a certain amount of speed from the ship. On the other side, there's no problem with this because when these start to flow you want all the stuff that's going through here to, to be passed through. You do still lose what's in the underground belts, but again, it's not the end of the world. So, the next, the next question is, how do you detect whether the ship is ready to be loaded? Well, that's what the logic down here is. So, we, we, we are reading off the contents of the, uh, of the warehouses with this green cable. That's then passed out, out of the airship through, these, uh, through, through the clamps over here and into these uh, combinators. And so, these watch the signal that's coming out of the ship. And this says, if there is any vulcanite, then output a U. This one says, if there is any cryonite, output a U. And those U's get passed up here into this system. And each one of these pieces of belt watches to see when U is equal to 1. Um, this is reducing the, the U. If, if U is greater than 0, then make U equal 1. I'm not sure why he's bothered with that. Why he didn't just say here, if U is greater than 0. But never mind. Um, 
then all the way along here, these will run if U is equal to 1, therefore if, if there is still cryonite or vulcanite left in the ship, these will run and pour, pull it all out into the, into the warehouses over here. On the other side we have a similar system, so the green signal is passed over from this, this pylon here, substation to this one over here, and that's fed into these ones where we're saying if U equals 0 then output 1L, so if U for unload, so if unload has got to 0, so we, we've done all the unloading, then we can set L to be, to be uh, a 1, Pass that through here. If L is one, then one. So if load, if yeah, that seems a bit. Also seems a bit unnecessary. But I guess this was there potentially in case any expansion and improvement is needed. And so when lo when when the ship is ready to load, we can then run these belts and push all the stuff through. Now again, one, once again, we could just have the have it fed have have the signal go directly into these belts and say if you equal if if you equal zero, then run the belts. But we haven't, and I'm not quite sure why. But never mind. So that controls when these are going, to, when the ship is going to be unloaded, and then when it's going to be loaded, based on what's inside it. And this is quite a simple, a simple design. If the ship was bringing more stuff out, then you could add more combinators in over here and have more and more and more use being fed out. Nice and straightforward. The other part of this that's even that's a little bit more complicated is deciding when the ship should leave. So at this end, we want the ship to leave when it basically when it's full. Uh, so when, when all of these warehouses are filled up, you want to tell the ship to depart. So it's the same as the trains. The problem is there's no um, inactivity signal on spaceships. You can't say when you've been inactive for five seconds, then it's time to leave. So what Mark has done here is he's divided, he's taken the contents of these warehouses and he's passing it through all of these combinators over here and saying for every hundred beryllium, output one dot. Every, for every 50 stone, output one dot. Every 50 iron ore, and so on, all the way across here. And, th and the observant among you will have noticed that these are all the stack sizes of these items. So the idea is, this is turning each of it's turning the signals that are coming out of here into the number of stacks. So we can then watch over here. When you get up to 1,500 stacks, then output one green tick. That green tick gets sent over to here, and then this combinator down here says, when you see one green tick, output all of the inputs. And the inputs include the signal to say go to Norvis orbit and lift off. So when the when the when the spaceship gets to 1,500 stacks, which isn't quite full, but that's to allow a little bit of a little bit of extra space for things like the broken batteries and anything else that might end up in here. When you get to 1,500 stacks, send a signal to the spaceship saying go, and the spaceship will then depart and head off to Norvis orbit. Now at the moment we are seeing 315 stacks, so we haven't we haven't remotely filled the spaceship up yet. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a good long time until the spaceship departs. But eventually this will get to 1,500. It will trigger the tick over here, which will pass through the the signals from the uh, from the constant combinator, it'll all go through into the spaceship console, the spaceship will take off, it'll fly over to Norbit and it will unload over there. So yeah, I think this should work quite nicely. Let's have a quick look over at uh, Norbit Orbit and, and see how the, uh, the launch command is done over there as well. So over here, it's the, the loading and unloading is working in basically the same way. We're looking at what's in the what's in the spaceship because we passed out through the spaceship clamp here uh, up into the up into the system here. So we're now watching for um, beryllium stone, raw rare metals, uh, iron ore and copper ore, except those two are the other way around, I can't read colours, um, and those will be passed over to here, and you see, again, if U equals 1, then you're unloading, and then over here, when L equals 1, then you load, and it's exactly exactly the same logic. And down here, we're, we're, what, what, what are we watching here? Oh yes, we're watching to see when the warehouses are empty, and so we know that we know that the amount of stuff that's being requested by the um, uh, by by Talos will easily fit into a spaceship. We're never going to be requesting uh, 1,500 stacks because I think at the moment we're only requesting about 20,000 of each of each of these um, metals in inverted commas. And so we know we're going to be absolutely fine fitting all of this into the spaceship. So once this, once all of these warehouses are empty, you've put in as much as it's asking for. So it's time to send the spaceship back to unload over there and start loading up with the other resources again. So yeah, I think this is going to work quite nicely. It's going to. We, I don't think we've actually run it properly, fully automated yet, because we just don't have enough beryllium being made on Talos yet. It's, it's a bit of a slow process. We, um, we might need to sort of to ramp production up a little bit further. We'll, we'll see. But I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments. At the moment, though, Mark's spaceship design seems... It, it looks good. I think uh, that we, we've had some ideas for potential improvements for it, but the basic idea, I think, is going to work quite nicely. So now that we've got this, the next step is going to be putting in the same sort of system, Fragnea, to bring Vulcanite out to, uh, to Norbit to be then sent off to wherever it needs to go. And then once we've done that one, we'll, we'll then do Snowdrop to, to bring the, the Cryonite in. And then maybe Kothar for the, uh, for the Iridium and Taras for the Immersium. 
Big Rid for all of the various different um, Vitamelange products and New Ord for the Holmium. Um, I said those in a more or less random order. I'm not sure whether that's going to be the, necessarily the order we do things in. We'll definitely be doing Agnea first and probably Snowdrop second, or well, second and third. You know what I mean. Um, the rest of them, we will see. We'll see which ones we feel like we're getting through the most of, which ones we need to have, which ones we need a good supply of. And once that's done, we can start shipping this beryllium out. And from here, it's going to go to well, it'll go to the astroscience production area. So maybe we'll have it drop off here, or maybe it'll need its own station. Because as you can see, we're getting through a certain amount of beryllium here. So if we can. If we can have 100 stacks come in and be dropped off, that'd be extremely useful. We'll also start sending it down to Norvis, and we'll probably put in another handover system over here, maybe on the bottom, maybe on the top, we shall see, in order to hand it over to a ground-based train and bring it over to places where it's needed, like here, where we're, make, where we're making the aeroframe scaffolds, because as you can see, there is a station here ready for, um, ready for the beryllium to be brought in, it just doesn't have any because we haven't got any beryllium being brought in by train. It's all coming in by delivery cannon at the moment. So, you know, uh, this system isn't running because we've run out of Immersite, but we'll ignore that for now. But uh, in theory, yes, once we've got everything running, we'll have all of this, be all of these resources being brought in by train in, in the appropriate quantities and built built up here. And then maybe we can start making the, the other beryllium products like the aeroframe, scaff no, the aeroframe uh, bulkheads as well. Um, and we might even start shipping out aeroframe rods. I, I don't know. They're fairly easy to make on site. But, but here, the point, of, the point of this is we can start making all of this stuff with the, um, with the productivity modules, which makes everything much, much cheaper. So it's worth sending it up and down the elevator a couple of times in order to, um, in order to get that big boost on the amount of stuff we get through. We also need to start making elevator cable down here on Norvis again, so we can use these all these product productivity boosts, um, and that's going to require a lot of the resources to be brought down in our elevator. So we're going to, we're going to be generating it up in space the slightly less efficient way for a, a bit longer first, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And so on Talos, you can see that the production has kicked back in again. We've got uh, now now that we've got that Vulcanite down here. Uh, the train just needed a bit of a nudge to get it out of the uh, the soft lock it was in. Maybe I should put in a um, an additional entry on here that's if you've been waiting for a very very long time. I wonder what the longest um, longest you can put in is. So we'll say uh, time passed is, oh dear, it's gone already. Um, half an hour? 20, 10, 15 minutes? Um, 10 minutes? 20, 20, okay, the train went while I was too busy thinking about it. Um, but in theory I could put in a system down here that would tell the train if, if you've been waiting down here for 15 minutes so maybe something has gone wrong and you should go up and, and, and uh, see if there's any more uh, Vulcanite or Cryonite to go and get. Because that is, that is a potential way of the system locking, as you saw. But now that we have the Vulcanite, we're having a nice happy trickle of, uh, of, ber of beryllium coming through out, out of the system. On the subject of spaceships, I should mention that we have Mark has been making the personal spaceships for everybody, but those have been moved from down here, which is why all this is getting deleted, and have been put now up here. So we still have the supply of, um, of ion stream coming in from a station that's been crammed in over here on the back of um, Science Park, but never mind, I mean, that, that'll work. No, no serious reason not to put it over here. And this is, as it says, the personal spaceport. And here we each have one of these sort of spaceships, and we can load those up with whatever we need to take it off to whatever planet we're going to. In order to uh, in order to supply it, in order to carry on doing building work, and the reason it's been moved over to here is because when we want to re we won't, when we want to fill the ships up with all the resources they're going to require, most of those are being brought from this sort of area because they're all being made on the bus. A lot of it's being made in the in the stack of doom that goes all the way up here, and uh, another thing that's being made in enormous quantities and brought over is the space scaffolding from here, and so it's a bit less expensive in num in the number of bot crashes and in the amount of time it takes if it can be brought from here to here rather than from here to here. Now, personally, I'd probably have put the uh, the spaceport in in this area instead, although um, it would barely have fit. It would probably have had to go in above the stations, and so it'd be a bit of a squeeze and wouldn't be any room for any more stations. So actually, over here is probably better, really. Um, but it's still a bit it's still a bit of a flight from here to here. So I might encourage people that if they need literally thousands of space scaffolding, it's probably better to bring it over by hand. But we we'll we'll, we'll see. The next thing we're going to take a look at is basically what I've been getting, what else I've been getting up to on Talos, apart from you know building up, or, apart from you know building up the whole rail system down here. So the first thing is that I've, I, I had, a, I needed a system to keep these trains properly fueled. These are the trains, as you can probably tell, that are bringing the barrel ore into the uh, to the processing system over here, and they're doing a, quite a good job of it. Although this one is currently getting in the way because there isn't a mine for it to go off to. But I had some severe problems with them running out of fuel, uh, and so I need, I need to boost the fuel input, 
And previously, we've been using the wood that's been generated by demolishing the free power system that was up here. Uh, that had gone into some chests down here and was being brought over by bots to be processed into, into the processed fuel, which means you get a boost of speed for the trains and you get a boost of the amount of energy you get out of it um, by running it through these fuel processors up here. Um, however, we weren't getting the fuel through fast, anything like fast enough. The, the, uh, bringing, it, bringing the wood over by bot was a, was a terrible idea, uh, and bringing it uh, and just using up what was in the chests was obviously going to run out at some point. So, in order to fix that, I put in some uh, greenhouses. These are all growing, uh, growing the, uh, the growing wood, which is then being passed out to be turned into the fuel. Um, that works fairly well. Uh, the problem was that uh, I didn't put in enough of them, so I then expanded it and expanded it and expanded it, and now there is plenty. So we've got lots and lots of wood being generated over here. It can all be passed up and over into the, into the processors over here to make the fuel. The processors were a little bit slow. I've put in a second one, as you can clearly see. Here. There should probably be an additional splitter in here to, to, to allow it to be brought through from this pro fuel, fuel processor as well. But to be honest, at the moment, we're just filling up buffers. It doesn't really matter. There is, there is now, we do now actually have plenty. Uh, we didn't before, but now we do. And so, these, so the trains are all being filled up nicely. It did take quite a long time, even with the two fuel processors and a nice ready supply of wood, to get all the trains filled up properly. But now... They're all absolutely chocker. They're absolutely full. But getting the 300 into every single train took quite a long time. We then have almost enough barrel ore being fed through here to keep the system happy. So it's being it's being unloaded. You can see here this warehouse didn't empty before the new supply arrived. So it, right now it's going okay. But you might have noticed there was a gap a bit earlier, um, which has now actually been completely eliminated, disappeared into the machines. So it's not quite running absolutely 100%, but it's pretty damn close. Um, and I did also stick in an additional um, ber beryllium processing facility over here that's running quite nicely. All of this is, um, we've got the nice steady stream coming in, it's producing at the, at the rate we expected to. The only slight problem with this one is I ran, I did run out of, ah, I fixed it. Um, I was going to say I did run out of tier 3 speed modules. I have not fixed it, I've put some in here. This should be full of tier 3 speed modules, not tier 2, so that needs upgrading. Over here we put in an additional one, same sort of way, I haven't plugged this one in yet. I don't have enough barrel ore coming in to keep, to keep uh, what I've got satisfied, so there's no point in setting up another system and getting that running as well. But I will, I think I, I, I intend to put in another barrel mine, so down here I cleaned out some, um, some biters along the route over here, and I'm ready to drop in another barrel mine over here, probably in the next, in the next stream. And we'll call that finished once that one goes in, I think. That will probably then be enough barrel being produced uh, from Talos. Then hopefully I can go away and get Agnea set up and get the Vulcanite flowing in much the same way. I also extended how much space there is behind this station in order to stack trains. So now there should be enough room so when things go a little bit wrong for whatever reason or when we catch up with the beryllium processing, there should be enough room to fit all of my trains in a row along here and keep them and um, without it getting out without it getting in the way of the rest of the lines and stopping these trains from, from running. Now here we go, as you can see, we've now got a gap on the belts. That means there's not enough bar barrel ore being dug up. The system isn't quite capable of keeping up. Um, but it's fairly close, as you can see, because that train is now departing. It, 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 it's almost there, it, that is, is what, basically what I'm trying to say. So I think the relevant question here is how is my beryllium production going? So if we look at the beryllium ingots there and there, over the last hour, okay, so our, our steady state at the moment is about 430 per minute, but that's that's pretty good. I'm um, I'm quite quite pleased with that. Um, and our um, we, there have been some spikes and troughs. This was where we ran out of vulcanite early, earlier on, as I was showing you. There's going to be some little dips in this, I think, as we have these gaps in the belt. Although that one does seem to be all right over there, I think it's probably going to still lead to a few little gaps. We as the um, as the, as the system slows down, unless of course there's enough being stockpiled in these machines of the intermediate processes that the um, that it can carry on running even when the uh, when the belts stop. I'm not certain. It feels wrong for that to be the case, but maybe 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 it is. Anyway, uh, we seem to be, yeah, as I say, we're producing about 430 per minute, and we're using about 7 per minute. So even if we look back over long, longer periods of time, the average has been 99 per minute, even with this wild spike up here. So given we're now at, what did I say, 430, I think we're probably going to be okay. We are, we are now just filling up buffers, whether that's the, oh, the train's gone all, all, all by itself this time. Uh, whether that's a buffer in the, in the warehouses down here in the spaceship, there's a lot of buffers to fill up. But we are producing it quickly enough that they will eventually get filled up. And then we can start doing, I don't know, lots and lots and lots, and lots of astro science and see if we can make a big dent in that buffer, I guess. Oh dear. <clears throat> That's how it works in Factorio, though. You, uh, you see how much of something you need, you start making that much, and then when you're, once you're okay, you then, you then increase your, your uh, consumption of it so that actually what you made isn't enough anymore. <laughs> 
The other exciting thing I did during the last stream was take on this pyramid over here. So I finally reckoned I've got good enough equipment with what with having this um, Mark IV adaptive armor in my suit, a load of lasers, and well, actually those are the main things. I decided that, that was probably going to be sufficient. So essentially, I ran in here and fired out a big spray of bio gun uh, splodge around here, and then lobbed off a load of nukes to take out the nests. As you can see, that's been lethally effective, and so that means we've been able to, I've been able to come in here, grab a screenshot of this, which I think we should be... We don't need yet, but I believe it's a clue for later, and also raid this box over here where I found this, a Productivity Module 9. Now, this really, really needs to go back to Norvis orbit, so I'll make sure it goes on the next spaceship that goes back, whether that's one that I'm flying in or whether it's a, a cargo ship, because then that can be put into one of the labs and we'll get a big boost for our research. Uh, as you can see, it massively increases the amount of energy you use, but on its own, it gives you a plus 20% productivity boost, compared to, say, the, the plus 6 you get from using these, these smaller prod mods. So this will give us a massive boost to the productivity in the research, and save us lots and lots of resources in the long run. That's going to be very, very worth having. The other thing I did on a combat sort of subject was I went down here because this, this area was getting attacked. So I've, I've since then, I've uh, rather severely increased the defences down here. A lot more lasers, a lot more walls because they're getting in through this gap here, which is not what you want. Unfortunately, we we're having some absolutely horrendous lag at the time because I think Tristan was uh, firing the um, nuclear artillery at biter bases or something like that. And my frames per second were down to about 10 frames per second, which made... Made, made my character rather hard to control and I didn't plan well enough and ended up landing in the wrong place and got myself killed. So unfortunately there has been another death in the last stream and yes it was me. <clears throat> I obviously need to be a little bit more careful when I'm uh, when I'm flying around like that. So that that was unfortunate. Um, and looking at this now, it makes it makes it occurs to me to wonder why I haven't just sort of extended this 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 wall a little bit out here and then up round here and then joining onto this one over here because then this bit of rail wouldn't just dip outside briefly and then go back into the uh, into the defended area. But yeah, what can you do? That was that, that's apparently on me being a muppet. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll ignore that. And I think that's probably a good note to end the um, end the video on. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I will, of course, be back tomorrow with the other half of this uh, episode where I'll show you what everyone else has been up to. So that may that's mostly Tristan and Mike because I, I've hardly hardly touched on what they've been doing at all. Um, so yeah, we'll talk talk about them tomorrow, and then on Monday we'll be back for to catch with the next stream where we'll carry on with all of the stuff we've been talking about today, fixing all this up. Hopefully, I'll get off to Agnea, but who knows? Everything always takes a bit longer than I expect it to. But we'll see how we how we get on with that. And then, of course, I'll be back on Wednesday for the uh, XCOM stream. Uh, we'll see how things go there. And then it'll be back to uh, Friday and Saturday for the uh, Factorio catch-up videos once again. And, and hopefully I'll manage to get another video out during the week as well. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.